In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our video version of the worship for this 4th of October, which is the day that we remember St Francis of Assisi, who in the early 13th century set up his order of friars and became hugely influential in the church. He was passionate about the poor, but also about the care of God's creation. And today, we have the final of our four Sundays on creation. After thinking last week about desolation, this week Henry is going to help us to think about restoration. Let us now, though, turn to quiet prayer as we come before God in sorrow for our failings, seeking God's healing and forgiveness. As those who know the generosity of God, let us confess our sins, especially the ways in which we take creation and God's gifts for granted. Lord, you give us this good earth, yet we take your generous gifts for granted. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we squander its rich resources. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we fail to share your bounty with all your children. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for today, let us pray. O oh God, you ever delight to reveal yourself to the childlike and lowly of heart Grant that following the example of the blessed Francis, we may count the wisdom of this world as foolishness and know only Jesus Christ and him crucified, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Genesis, starting at the 26th verse of the first chapter. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every other living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. How will creation be restored? The world will end. There will be a judgment, and then God will make all things new. This has led some people 
mainly in America, but not solely, to believe that climate change is a good thing. Environmental catastrophe? Bring it on. The sooner the world ends, the sooner Jesus will return and make all things new. This kind of crazed thinking led some Christians to applaud Donald Trump when he withdrew the US from the Paris Climate Agreement. This is dangerous nonsense. Even more dangerous and more stupid than if one of Leonardo da Vinci's friends had said, we should burn the Mona Lisa, then Leo would be forced to paint something even better. When I was a small boy at school, we had an assembly about judgment. It has stayed with me ever since and haunted me, to be honest. It ran like this. At the end of the world, God will call all creation together for judgment. So far, so biblical. And when all are present before God, God will call humanity to step forward. Well, this happens, and God was clearly displeased with how humanity have looked after creation. And then came a twist, a departure from any version of judgment that I found in the Bible. God struck a deal. God offered a full pardon to humanity if there were just two species from all the rest of creation that would stand alongside the human and say that they had done an okay job. Well, immediately, the dog ran forward and stood beside the human. But no one else moved. In vain, the human signalled to the cat. But the cat pretended not to notice. The human then looked to the cows, and they replied, Why should we? We remember the factory farms, the slaughterhouses, how our suckling young were wrenched from us so you could drink our milk. We remember the veal crates. And the fish chimed in. Don't look to us. We remember the trawlers, the mass suffocations on deck before half of us were thrown back into the sea, dead. Then the whales, the sharks, the insects, the rhinos, the chickens, the bacteria, the pigs, the orangutans, all spoke all giving their highly understandable reasons why they did not wish to join the dog and stand alongside the human. And so it ended. Humanity had managed to make only one friend in all humanity's years as steward of creation. Now I wonder if they tell stories like that nowadays in assemblies. Okay, I've added the odd detail here and there, but that's basically what I heard back then when I was probably five or six. It haunted me at the time, and it haunts me still. Okay, it's not biblical, but that fact doesn't remove the arresting truth that we as humanity have not been good stewards of God's creation. Maybe the problem begins with Genesis in chapter 1 verse 26, where we read, God gives humans dominion over creation. And all this talk of dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth and filling the earth and then subduing it has possibly sent us in the wrong direction because we assumed we knew what dominion was. We thought it meant we're the boss, the most important, the top species with power over all the others to make them do whatever we want. I like this picture. It shows humanity lording it over all the rest. And last week, Sam reminded us very wisely that for most of human existence, humanity has had to struggle really hard just to survive. So when we dismiss our consumption as idolatry, we're forgetting the intensity of our simple struggle to survive. I wonder if the downside to humanity's age-long struggle is that we have now inherited a poor view of the rest of creation, to put it very crudely, We view nature as eat or be eaten. If that was ever the case, it no longer stands, especially not in the West, and especially since our tools for subduing nature are so much more developed. We can subdue and exploit nature on an unprecedented industrial scale. I'm not sure dominion ever meant freedom to use and abuse and discard. It certainly cannot mean using, abusing and discarding on an industrial scale. Since Anno Domini, since the arrival of Jesus, God has shown us 
what godly dominion looks like. Jesus came as one of us, born as a baby in poverty, not a feudal overlord, not to mistreat us, not to use and abuse us as part of some greater scheme and then discard us when he has finished. When Jesus subdued people, when he won them over to his rule, he did this with love, with humility. He was careful, he was generous, he was self-sacrificing. When he talked to his disciples about power, he spoke of tyrants and the rulers of the Gentiles who lorded over their subjects. And then he says, it will not be so among you. That is not how you as disciples are ever to exercise power. And by extension, this is not how humanity is to exercise dominion over creation. That approach will destroy creation when our job as stewards is to manage creation well and when needed to restore creation. There's a picture that goes alongside the triangle and this is the one I prefer. This shows us as part of creation, working with all of the rest for our mutual survival. So a question, how can we be more Christ-like in our dominion? And how can we be more Christ-like in our restorative stewardship. I want to take just one verse, just one saying of Jesus and try to run with it and see how far it will take us. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I believe we need a heartfelt change in the way we're conducting our stewardship of creation. But what if we'd started to treasure the independence of all things, from blue whales to bacteria, and treasure our place as part of this, not as Lord's over it. How about if we treasured the delicate balance of climate? Surely we would stop believing the easy lies that climate change is just a phase or a left-wing hoax. We would seek to remove fossil fuels from the economy. We would ban single-use plastics. We would stop being so wasteful. What if we treasured the world around us? Surely we would invest in cycle routes, in cutting emissions, in creating new jobs in clean green industries, in exploring alternative energies like ground source heat exchange, solar, wind and wave power. What if we treasured diversity? Surely we would stop killing rhinos and pangolins for dubious health cures and we'd stop cutting the fins from God's good sharks to make delicacies. If we could learn to treasure our jobs as stewards, we would embrace all changes that would assist us in our work. New ways, new wineskins. We'd build carbon zero homes, we'd retrofit energy efficiency into existing homes. We would farm differently, plant more trees, work with nature, not against it. Often nature will heal itself if only we give it a little space. And following David Attenborough's call, we will change our daily diets. We eat far too much meat, fish and dairy. And it is now possible in the West to enjoy happy, healthy lives on plant-based diets. Some of this we can accomplish as individuals. Me? I need to improve. There is a lot that I'm not doing that I could be doing. I need to treasure my job and my planet more. And I think the same is true for each of us listening this morning. But this is beyond individual responses. We need governments who treasure humanity's call to stewardship. Much of the technology we need, we already have. What we lack is leadership to create a global collective will to change. There's so much that we, especially here in the UK, a rich Western nation can do and should do. But this is not just about ensuring our future and our children's future. This endeavour, this work, is part of our worship. This is a key part of our obedience to God. God tasks human beings with being stewards of creation, and God entrusted us with a masterpiece. God placed the running of this precious, diverse and beautiful planet into our hands. That's an astonishing job. It's a good job an amazing job to have. We should treasure this job. Presumably, God thought we were up to it. And here's the thing, we don't even have to do it alone because God works with us. And God's creation is designed by God to heal itself. Sometimes we just need to leave it alone and protect it. It's a wonderful masterpiece. And if we make it our treasure, then our hearts 
will change and it will be restored and we shall be restored with it. We need to pray for new hearts for this task and we'll find these new hearts by treasuring the wonders around us because where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. Amen. to this morning's prayers of intercession is hear our prayer let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work God the beginning and the end of all things in your providence and care you watch unceasingly over all creation we offer our prayers that in us and in all your people your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord Lord of life hear our prayer we pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds, that their labour may be for the welfare of all. Lord of wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world affected by climate change. By the grace of your Spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. Lord of justice, hear our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of faithfulness, hear our prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfil your wise and loving purpose in us, and in all for whom we pray, that with them, and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed, and the whole earth give praise to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. Don't forget that we meet together on Zoom on Sunday mornings at 11.15 and in the church at 5.30 for evening prayer. Do let us know what you think we should be doing to care better for our world. And do get in touch if you want to get more involved in the church. Stay in touch with us and have a good week. And now, may God, the Holy Spirit, who hovered over the waters of creation and formed the world from chaos, form you in the likeness of Christ and renew the face of the earth and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
Oh,